Welcome to my studio. So let's paint these beautiful plumeria flowers, also known as frangipani. As you can see, I've traced them down like this from this photograph, but you can draw them freehand. But on this channel, we are all about just getting on with the watercolour painting. I've done a really simple outline with no sketchy edges, and this is really important for a clean looking watercolour. The paper I'm using is Strathmore Aquarius 2, bound in this beautiful book, and I'll explain later on a bit more about it. And the colour chart that I use here to match my colours, I'll show you how to make one on the top of the screen. And all the materials I'm going to be using, including this cute little double palette here from Etcher, with lots of different wells, and of course it's ceramic, so it won't stain. I'll link everything in the description box underneath this video, so that you can check them out for yourselves, but as always, use what you have. So watercolour painting is all about working from light to dark. So to start with, we're going to be mixing our greens for the leaves here. So I'm using cadmium yellow pale, French ultramarine and sap in a mixture like this. So we're just mixing the greens with the cadmium yellow and the French ultramarine uh, in different consistencies here. Don't be too fussy, just get your greens mixed up and then the sap, on, the sap green on its own. So you can see that I'm working wet in wet, which simply means that I'm going to be dropping in the watercolour paper on the area that I've wetted with my brush. It's really important that you stay within the pencil lines, so just apply your water where you're going to be applying your paint like this. And you can see me here just dropping in the mixture of cadmium yellow pale with French ultramarine and a tiny bit of sap. As I said, you don't need to be too fussy, this is just our base tone, and we're working from light to dark in many different layers, so it's super important that your first layers are really watery like this, and then I'm just dropping in a tiny bit of sap. The brush I'm using, as you can see, is a number four size red dot spotter. These are from Rosemary Co, and they are similar to a round brush, but they have a smaller bristle, which means that they are easier to handle. This is a synthetic brush and as always I will link them in the description box underneath this video if you want to check them out for yourself. So you can see working wet and wet here. This element here, wet on dry. It depends whether you prefer one method or the other and in this instance it doesn't really matter because we're working in a small area at a time. As I said, don't be too fussy about the paint, just use a green mix that you have because we're going to be building up the colours later, working step by step. And if you're new to watercolour painting, remember there's always this kind of ugly duckling stage where your painting looks wrong. So I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through so that you can watch past that tricky stage. You can see me here just demonstrating the art of negative painting. Now these veins have a lot of sort of space in between them and it would take quite some time to paint them in. So we're going to be using a much quicker method today. So I'm just showing you here how I'd ordinarily do it by leaving a little gap there to create the veins. But like I said, to make this a super easy tutorial for everybody to join in with, we're just going to be working um, a slightly different way to negative painting today. But I just wanted to show you what I would ordinarily do. Okay, so everything's dry, so we're just mixing a little bit more of the colours together here. As I said, just vary in the ratio between the yellow and the blue, just to make sure that we have a different sort of variation on each of the colours. So because the, layer, the first layer is now dry, we can safely go in with our second layer. I'm using a number four size silver line brush again. This is a nice fine point. This is from Jackson's um, and it's really good for sort of just getting into the corners because the tip of the brush is nice and sharp. So you can see me applying this onto the initial wash, working around that really pretty flower head like this, just taking your time, working in small areas at a time, so it's completely stress-free painting. Once I've applied the colour, I clean my brush in the puddle of water, pat it on my kitchen paper, and then I use that damp brush to blend the colours through. I do have a separate video on um, how I apply my colours in a little bit more detail and I'll link it on the top of the screen for you if, or if you want to click through and take a look at that then please do so. Notice how I'm just using that damp brush to pull the colour through. I've added a yellow tone to the top part of this petal and just making sure that these colours are merged nicely together. The same process on, on all of the other leaves right up to that pencil line using the tip of my brush. And then blending it through as usual. Thank you. 
So the photograph that I'm using today was very kindly donated to us by our moderator on our Facebook group, it's Vicky Higgins. So thank you so much for letting us use your beautiful photograph that was taken on your holiday recently. And I know that you've been wanting to paint this for quite some time, so I really hope that I've done you proud. So if you want access to our line drawings and reference photographs that we can use to trace down, um, you can obtain them in a couple of ways. You can join our Facebook group, which will give you access to all of the line drawings and reference photographs that we use here on our channel so that you can join in. And by joining our private Facebook group, it also means that you can post up your finished paintings, have some feedback from me and our other fantastic members. I will put a link in the description box underneath this video, but there is another way that you can obtain them if you're not on Facebook. I'm also going to be putting a line drawing and reference photograph right at the end of this video so that you can screenshot them and print them out that way. So be sure to stay right until the end of this video so that you can obtain access to those. So same process as before here, we're just mixing up our greens. It doesn't matter in which ratio, apply that green onto the initial wash and blend it through. You'll notice that I'm adding that lighter tone to the top, so we have a more yellowy tone to the tip. Um, that's just something I prefer to do, and I think it looks really cool. We're not aiming for photorealism today, it's just a lovely painting of these beautiful plumeria flowers. With our learn to paint as you paint approach, So everything's dry now, so I'm going to focus my attention on the flowers themselves. I have here cobalt violet, bright rose and perillion violet. So the bright rose is made by Holbein. We have transparent orange by Schmincke and the Windsor and Newton is the cobalt violet. If you don't have these colours, use the nearest that you have. And if you have a difficulty matching your colours and you don't have these tones, then do let me know and I'll do my best to help you. So I'm applying this wet on wet. This particular flower head has a really light tone. So the cobalt violet has this really sort of gentle violety hue. And I've applied this here wet on wet. And I'm now dropping in the watery mix of perillion violet. Perillion violet is a sort of really vibrant maroon colour, but when you water it down, it creates this beautiful pinky purple tone, which works delightfully on this plant. Just dropping in a tiny bit of the transparent orange, and I'm going to let this settle into the paper. Focus on my attention now on this really bright uh, petal here. Again, working wet in wet, and I'm applying the base tone, which is the bright rose. Again, this one's from Holbein. If you don't have bright rose, you could maybe use something like an opera, opera rose or something like that. With the colour now wet and in place, I'm dropping in a tiny bit of perillion violet. Notice how that colour splurges into the damp paint and just makes it look really, really soft and beautiful. Remember, these are just our base colours and we're going to be building them a lot more later on. I'm going to apply this on the rest of the petals and make sure that they are dry. Once they are dry, I'll continue building up the colours like this using the same mixes as before of bright violet and the perillion with a tiny bit of that transparent orange. Just want to talk to you a little bit about this beautiful watercolour journal that was sent to me. A lady called uh, Kate Clark uh, reached out to me and asked me if she could send me this beautiful journal. Kate binds these herself and hand prints the, um, the journal covers and they are one of a kind marbled cover paper and the paper that I'm using is Strathmore Aquarius too. And she binds the book in such a way that it can lay out flat while you're painting on it and it's lightweight so you can kind of just throw it in your bag and carry it around. But I think it actually makes a really wonderful gift for somebody. I'll put Kate's email in the um, description box underneath this video. So if you want to just email Kate, if you want some more information. And I think she makes them in different sizes as well. So she's at thebrushqueen at gmail.com. I'll put everything in the description box underneath, but do check this lovely lady out. So still working through, I'm avoiding the little folds that you can see here. I'm using my number four round brush to do this.
So everything's dry and I'm mixing up the same colours as before. So we have perillion violet, bright rose and transparent orange. So this is our opportunity to really pack a punch with these colours and give them a bit more depth. This is my number zero Tintoretto brush. Um, it's actually, uh, it, it's a round brush, but it's actually more like a liner brush. So again, this one's from Jackson's and it has a lovely fine point, which means that I can get into all the corners again. It has a really fine tip, but it does load really well with paint. So I'm not constantly going back to my puddles of paint. So you saw me there dropping in, first of all, the transparent orange by Schmincke, a tiny bit of bright rose, and then of course, dropping in that beautiful perylene violet. Notice how I'm dipping my brush in that tiny puddle of water on my palette there. And if you are familiar with my channel, you have seen me talk about this a million times. I use this water puddle in the center because it means that I'm not flooding my brush with water when I'm dipping it into the glass jar. I tend to use this because it means that I can control the amount of water on my brush without getting too much water onto my paper. So a pro tip there, make sure that you have a tiny puddle of water to work from. You can see how I'm just using the residual paint on the brush now to pull up um, a few veins and a little bit of texture and just blending in that color as I work through. I've kept a tiny little gap in the middle because we don't want to cover this entirely. We just want this to be a lovely transition between the pale and the dark colors, giving a little bit of tonal variation as we work through. And I'll complete this process on all of the other petals. So just dropping in a tiny bit of that perillion violet just to sharpen up the edges as I'm working through bit by bit. Notice how I'm just dropping it into the damp paint and just using a damp brush to blend them together like this, dropping in a tiny bit more of that beautiful bright rose. Continuing the process on all of the other petals using the transparent orange, you can see how vibrant these colors are and they work really, really well together. So you can see how I'm using this soft kind of wiggly motion to create a little bit of texture. And I'm now going in with the perillion violet to the center here, just to get that in place, working around those little folds. If you are new to our channel, just to let you know that we do release new content every Tuesday, full length painting tutorials. So if this is something that interests you, you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification. That way you won't miss new uploads when they are released. If you are enjoying this video, do show me some love and hit that like button. It's a free way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it means that more people get the chance to see it. Dropping in that beautiful perillion violet into the damp paint, as you can see, it's now really looking sort of that, that beautiful different tones and variations. It's already looking flower-like. Now this little one on this side, we want to keep a little bit lighter. So I'm using the same colors, but in a slightly more watery consistency. And you can see how I'm applying them here using the tip of this tiny little brush, just to control the amount of paint that we have. Sharpen up the edges as I work through. Just to let you know, and in case you haven't joined us already, we are over on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour. Um, please join us over there because we, pay, we try to post up daily. There's lots of behind the scenes stuff and you get to see what's coming up here on YouTube and also fun reels and a few tips and all that kind of stuff. So do join us there if you haven't already. Okay, working through, you can see how I'm using these colors, the same as before, but this time adding a tiny bit more water to keep this flower on the right hand side, nice and light. Just really gently working through, using small areas at a time, which means that you have full control of your paint. 
Notice how when I'm working through, I'm applying my layers in a weak consistency. This will give you the opportunity to build up your colors without your paint going muddy. If you go in too thickly too quickly, your paintings will look overworked and your paint will start to lift off. I just want to take a moment to tell you about our Patreon, which at the time of filming has four different membership levels, from many weekly videos of doodles, vlogs and podcasts, to full-length botanical painting tutorials, which are exclusive to Patreon and are of course ad-free. If this is something that interests you, I've put a link in the description below, plus it's a way for you to support my channel. So if you are keen on botanical painting, then do take a look at us over on Patreon. And as I said, it's a way that you can support our channel. We also have another way that you can support us here on YouTube. If you would like to offer your support, we now have a thing called Super Thanks underneath every video. So if you just scroll across, you can see it and you can show your appreciation that way. So as you can see, working through, I'm just giving this a real punch of colour now by adding this beautiful transparent orange and the bright rose. These colours work really well together and I'm just applying them to the bottom part here. So dropping in this perilene here and blending through. I'm a great fan of water washing. So what I'm doing here is just applying a water glaze over everything and letting it dry completely. And this will help merge the colors together. Before you apply your other layers of paint though, it's really important that you let everything completely dry. Otherwise your colors will stick together and the paint will lift off. So using the number zero brush here, you can see I'm just using this really light wiggly motion to enhance the areas over the folds. And you'll notice that I did a plain water glaze over the folds on the other frangipani, on the other plumeria flowers head, just to take that whiteness out a bit. And just by putting that water glaze on, it's taken that stark white color out. And it means that I can continue building up the colors when it's dry. So it looks far more natural now that I've blurred those colors together and using the same mixes as before to build up the colors on the other uh, flower head like this. So just continuing to build up those colors, I decided that I wanted to add a little bit more of the transparent orange. As I say, I'm not going absolutely true to the photograph. As always, a little bit of artistic license. Just make it work as you want it to. So working around these little folds, using tiny little strokes with my brush, working around bit by bit, and of course, blending it through with the uh, usual method that I spoke about at the very start of this video. And I'm now using the paint that is left on the brush to create some veins like this and a little bit of shape and a little bit of form, working through petal by petal. You can see how I'm just using this really light touch to create some texture. Just following the natural curve of the petal. Everything's dry on this flower head now, so I'm using the opportunity to work around each of the folds like this, just by giving them a little bit more definition using the perillion violet that is more or less completely dry on my palette, which means I've got full control of that paint. Using a really light touch to outline each of these folds makes them a little bit more defined and gives them a little bit more of an edge. And with light feather strokes here, I'm now working on the outside edge of this petal to give it some definition like this. And working through petal by petal, just outlining each one. I really like the sharp edges and the contrast between the paint and the paper. So if you are a fan of your sharp edges, then do consider doing this, working through petal by petal and just sharpening them up like this to make them really stand out from the paper. Just adding a little bit more detail here on the outside edge of this petal. 
and once again sharpening up that outside edge. Just blending through with a tiny bit of water and then we're going to look at the leaves. So a tiny bit of orange in the middle here. But make sure that your colour isn't too strong. And of course, as always, blend it through. I'm using my number four silver line brush to do this. We do have over a hundred videos on our YouTube channel now, lots of different botanical painting tutorials, and I will put a playlist at the end of this video, along with a reference photo and line drawing, and um, you can click through and I'll see you there. Okay, so let's look at these leaves, which is a little bit flat at the moment, so we need to add some color. So I'm mixing the same colors as before, and I will say watercolor purists, Look away now because we're going to be adding some white gouache to this paint. So I've mixed up the same green so it doesn't matter what ratios. We have French ultramarine and cadmium yellow or cadmium yellow pale and of course the, um, the sap green. And I've added to the, each of these mixes some white gouache that I had in a little palette that I mixed some time ago. And I'm actually painting in these veins rather than negatively painting as I would ordinarily do as I explained earlier on in this video. Now because I've mixed it with some watercolour paint, um, I found that I needed to go over it quite a few times because it's very very white when you put it onto the paper like this but of course as it dries it becomes almost invisible so you'll need to either go you need to add quite a bit of um, of the gouache to this or just go over it a few times as I'm doing here but by painting in the, the little veins like this it does save you negatively painting of course you can do that but it will take you a little bit more time and because i wanted to simplify this tutorial and make it accessible for everybody to do i decided to do it this way and actually i was really pleased with the results so i just continue to build up these colors don't worry about um, which colors i'm using just mix your own greens and add some white to it to keep it really really simple so as you can see, when you paint it on, it looks really, really stark, but as soon as it dries, you'll need to put a few more coats on. But actually, I really like the look of this, and I'm just adding a tiny bit of that uh, darker green tone towards some of the areas, just to strengthen them up a little bit. So the dark green that you can see is just a mixer, mixture of French ultramarine, sap, and yellow, and it's in a slightly thicker consistency. So at this point, I'm just going to continue the process until the painting is finished. So I'll stop talking and let you listen to some music. Remember to stay right until the end of this video where I'm going to put up the line drawing and the reference photographs so that you can screenshot them, print them out and trace them down yourself. And of course, I'll put that playlist that I mentioned with um, all the botanical painting tutorials that we have. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll see you next time.